Hello, you are watching Unipro Eugene podcast. Today I am going to show you how to use a new Eugene component called Assembly Browser. This tool allows a user to effectively browse next generation sequencing data. The Assembly Browser works with Assembly data stored in BAM and SAM file formats. Support for other NGS data formats such as AIDS and MAC is planned for future Eugene versions. One of the main Assembly Browser goals is providing a user the capability to navigate within huge datasets rapidly and make it easier to overview the whole context. That is why we chose approach when a file with the Assembly data is converted into a special database format. Open a BAM or SAM file using the standard Open File dialog. As an example, you can use a small BAM file attached to this episode. But I would choose a large BAM file obtained from the 1000 Genomes project. In the dialog appeared after the selection of the file, you can choose the required context. This could significantly reduce the conversion time. Note that the assembly browser does not require the index file to work with assembly data, but the index could accelerate the import process. After that, click Import to start the import to the database file. Conversion of a file with assembly data into a Eugen database file can take some time. For example, it took about 40 minutes on my computer to convert the BAM file larger than 5 GB. Finally, the converted file appears in the project view. It contains the contig objects selected in the import dialog. The first contig is opened by default. Here you can see the list of top covered regions of the assembly. This may be helpful when short reads are concentrated only in some certain parts of the config. So click on a link of a well covered region to open it. Now let's add the reference sequence. To do it, just drag it from the project view to the assembly browser. Above the reference area, there is the assembly overview area. The longer the line in the area and the deeper the color, the more short reads are located in this region. There are a lot of ways to navigate in assembly data. To move, you can, for example, drag the reads area using your mouse or use the keyboard arrows. Various hotkeys are also available to help you to browse and assemble data. The full list of hotkeys is available in the documentation. A new tip is also shown each time you resize the assembly to the list of well covered regions. By the way, another handy way to resize the reads area is rolling the mouse wheel. To go to a certain location, input the coordinate in the field on the toolbar and click Go. To rapidly jump to needed locations when there is no information about the coordinates, use the assembly overview. The reads area follows your clicks in the assembly overview area. There is one more option that should be mentioned. The assembly overview is also resizable. To zoom it, hold shift and select a region on the overview that you want to inspect. The other way to zoom the assembly overview is to use its context menu items. The coordinates at the right corner of the assembly overview correspond to the current coordinates of the reads area. To get information about a read, simply point your mouse at it. The hint appears. It shows the detailed information about the short read. To copy the information to the clipboard, select the corresponding item in the context menu. Now you can paste this information, for example, into a text editor. You can also export a read of all currently visible reads into a FESTA or FESTQ file. Input the file name and click Export. The file appears in the project view. And at the end of this episode, I would shed some light on the directions of the assembly browser future development. First of all, we are going to extend visualization options. Some of these options, like coverage graph for the reads area and different reads highlighting, would be available in the next 1.10 release. In the future releases, we are going to support annotations and working with several short read tracks at the same time. 
Another direction is supporting the second approach of working with assembly data, when the file would be opened without the need to convert it to the database file. This approach could affect the speed and overview capabilities, but it also can be useful in some cases. And as always, we are open to your requests and wishes. So, stay tuned and write us what you think.